Hey, my name is Daniel, and I'm a staff writer here at the Movie Buff. This year, we were lucky enough to be able to cover the South by Southwest Film Festival with movie reviews, as well as interviews, which we will be posting some exciting video interviews and podcast interviews this week. So you're either listening or watching us. Uh, I just wanted to introduce this interview and introduce myself as I was able to chat with the team behind the horror film Off Season, which premiered as part of the Midnighter section at this year's festival. So I was able to chat with the writer-director Mickey Keating, as well as actors Jocelyn Donahue, who plays Marie, and Joe Swanberg, who plays George in the film. And this is for Off Season. Um, I hope you enjoy the podcaster video whichever one you found first thank you hey guys i'm daniel uh, i'm talking to you for the movie buff and it's uh great to meet you <laughs> great nice to, meet, to you. meet you too awesome uh i also i'll get right into it uh mickey i was just, without spoiling too much the history of lone palm beach is very interesting what was it like world building this it was you know it was super fun i i uh had been working on this movie for a couple years and one of the things that i did was write this big backstory you know for the town that was mostly just for me just so i knew uh you know because when you create the logic you can break the logic right <laughs> and so really kind of the ability to build something you know that was kind of really anchored in the southern gothic style mythology and um and create basically a a, a fairy tale for this town was really exhilarating it's something that i you know had done to a certain extent on my previous films, but went way more detailed and in depth on this one. So, uh, yeah, it was very rewarding to kind of see it come to life. And I also got the sense that like the the Overlook Hotel in The Shining is very much its own character, and I very much got that sense from your island as well. If you wanted to expand oh, cool. on portraying that, yeah, I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it basically, I really am intrigued by the idea of of locations and areas or towns that have this kind of, you know, I guess like they say in The Shining, like that kind of just thumbprint of something else, you know, uh, of a dark past, you know, that kind of like burnt toast or whatever. And so that was really kind of exhilarating to take something that is so natural where it's like this place is meant for tourism and for happiness and for sunshine and kind of flip that res re reverse. It's a very kind of gothic, I you know, idea. And so I think that was where, you know, I really wanted to explore. It's like you see these beautiful uh, uh, beaches and you see this amazing quaint little town, but no one's there and it's very decayed and, and covered in fog. And that was really exciting for me. Okay, now jumping off that fog, Jocelyn, what was it like for you, like running in that scene when you just run down the street and it's just all empty? Uh, I, that was so fun to shoot. I mean, we had the camera in the in the back of a truck and I'm running after the truck and you know that was just such a fun movie making uh I mean there's there were several days of, of running <laughs> through the fog um and yeah you just really I Joe said earlier it's like nice when you don't have to act like when you're just like really just responding to the environment around you um and so yeah being on the in the street with the fog being in the jungles with the fog it just really ups the the sense of uncertainty and danger does the crew like do anything to try to hide themselves so it's just to give in to your isolation in those moments <laughs> sure i mean when they can <laughs> so they're like hidden well, in the in the jungle kind of thing <laughs> Oh yeah, there were people ducking behind everywhere. What you don't see in the town moment was like the entire town. It was almost like a 1950s movie when like Elizabeth Taylor showed up. You know, what you don't see is outside the frame all the people <laughs> taking photos. Because this is the we, this town had never been uh, in a movie before, so everyone was really thrilled. So you know, I definitely felt like Howard Hawks or something in, in that day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Well, and you and you filmed it on an island. Uh, so this it's uh. I guess what was the, what would be the technical term for New Smyrna Beach? I get you have to get to a couple through a couple bridges to get there. So I'm going to say it was an island. It's a lot more isolated in the movie than it actually is in real life. Uh, when I had written this script for this little town, I hadn't been there for like since I was like 13 or so, and um, it had grown up a lot since since I've been there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a movie, Dream World Island, I guess. <laughs> okay. Now now that sound we just heard was that. Is that like a big boat? Because that's just fitting for this conversation, I think. 
<laughs> somebody that was yeah, Mickey's name. Mickey's doing this interview from his yacht. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, yeah. Talking about the bridge, what 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 was it, the genesis like of that Richard Brake character, just as the harbinger kind of gatekeeper kind of character? Yeah. Um. Well, you know, I was really in, interested in these kind of, you know, in telling this subplot story of the, a really kind of tragic, blind, devotional character who believes in something and spends their whole life waiting for something. So when I talked to Richard, I was like, this is your version of like waiting for Gatto, right? You know, you've been spending your whole life waiting for something that really never comes. Uh, and I thought that was just very tragic. So when I pitched it to him, I said, you know, in my mind, this guy's not not a, a horror film crony, he's very sad. <laughs> you know, he's committed his whole life to something that ultimately not, might not work out for him. And people might, he's an outsider from where he comes from, he's an outsider from this town. So uh, that's how he played it. And I think there's a lot of moments where I'm like, man, this guy's really, really I really feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, also, I just wanted to get a more like, kind of a more of a general question, but just, with Joe, you being in the film and Jeremy Gardner, and as well as you, Mickey, behind the camera, what's it like when the mumblecore subgenre of filmmaking, what's it like having that community of filmmakers and those collaborator, collaborators? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's funny. I, the reason why, when I reached out to Joe, I've been a fan of Joe's forever. And I think that, you know, what, what he has done, you know, and the, the genre that he's basically uh, pioneered, you know, was really impressive to me. And what's important to me is this ability to, you know, Joe and I bonded over Robert Altman immediately. And just this ability to take these kind of, you know, uh, movie moment, horror movie characters, genre characters, but to say, well, what, you, what would you want your character to do instead of saying like, all right, now hit this mark, say this line, because that's important. That's super not interesting to me. And I think that a lot of times you back yourself into a corner, but what Joe's movies inspired me to do was to kind of create this, be able to create this stage and this freedom for the actors to kind of do what they would want to, you know, essentially. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it was super, when I, I, I was so nervous to meet Joe at a, at a premiere of like one of his, uh, his episodes of Easy, uh, and I was just like, oh my God, it's like, <laughs> it's like one of my heroes. And then I asked him to be in the film and I was very, very, flattered when he said yes <laughs> and Jeremy too I mean Jeremy's just a brilliant improviser everyone did such a great job in the film of improvising Malora and Jocelyn and those flashback scenes uh it, it was really great to build a you know an atmosphere of that kind of freedom within a rigid horror film structure I suppose Joe did you want to add on to that yeah I I love being on set with other directors like um having Jeremy there was awesome we we got to spend a couple days just um Talking, getting to know each other, talking shop. I feel like um, in between takes, there was a ton of um, inside baseball conversations about festival circuit, distributors, who's making what right now. Um, and, you know, like in a role like this where I, um, or I guess pretty much any day on a film set, you know, you're, you're working half the day and then the other half the day, um, you know, you're killing time in between takes or things like that. It's always so fun to have um, a cast and a crew who you can hang out with and talk to. So um, I feel like that's always even better when there's other filmmakers and people like that around. Like Jeremy, someone who I didn't know at all before this, we just immediately have a million things to talk about because we have so many mutual friends and um, share collaborators and histories and stuff. Same with Jocelyn, like she and I know each other for a really long time. and so. So nice to arrive into an environment where you're not necessarily feeling like the new kid. Cool. Like you get there, you're like, oh, good, I already have a couple friends. It's great. Cool. Now, uh, premiering at South by Southwest and just uh, with the title off season kind of makes it seem like a fight first for survival kind of thing. And I don't think we can really put this into one basket, but are you excited about the reactions? Because I think people aren't going to expect this, what happens. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, totally. I mean, I'm always intrigued uh, to see how people respond to my to my films. And, you know, it's like part of the the amazing aspect of making films is listening to people's interpretations. Uh, so, yeah, I can't I can't wait. You know, I I uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> OK, awesome. Now, 
Joe and Jocelyn, what, or whoever wants to go first, what intrigued you about this script? Um, for me, I mean, the first thing that was just so intriguing is the setting and the environment and this really unique, um, weird place and this, the mythology that Mickey kind of wrote for this world and these characters. Um, and, and Marie is, um, you know, the journey for her is really intense. It's like she's been through something, she's already suffering a loss, um, you know, of her mother and then having to return and uncover all these secrets and then be in danger from her, you know, from this, this secret family past that she's just learning about. So there was definitely like a lot to play with that character and then getting the chance to work with great actors who I love and respect like Joe and Jeremy and Melora and Richard was, just such a great opportunity and I learned so much from each of them and they all work very differently and um, all these different characters kind of got to bounce off of Marie and um, it was really cool creative experience. Yeah, I, I loved the character and also my my first conversations with Mickey, you know, involved um, the, the freedom that, you know, Mickey was sort of saying we can improvise a lot, we can um, strengthen and enrich these characters on set and so I already loved the arc of George, like where he, who he is, where he enters the movie and kind of what happens to him. Um, but then also the ability to work with Jocelyn and, and turn these people into a, like a really rich, interesting, complicated relationship was great. I mean, uh, my favorite kind of um, role to do. Okay. So you, you keep talking about the, the improv. So basically like it was just how you thought these characters would react to the situations kind of thing. Yeah, we, I mean, I think we stuck um, relatively close to the script, but uh, Jocelyn and I did a lot of um, talking with Mickey about um, who they are. You know, it's it, it's an interesting situation where we first meet them. Um, their, their relationship history is a little unknown, but the tension is there on the surface. So there's all these questions like, um, why is he, why did she choose him to accompany her on this? very important and complicated thing. They obviously trust each other and have some kind of um, understanding around that, but also it's clearly like not a relationship that's um, getting better or, you know, kind of like um, moving towards a deeper place. It feels that they're um, separating from each other or having some kind of issues like that. So um, I would say that the improv was mostly used to fill in um, uh, bits of those background details when we felt it was appropriate. And then also there were times where Mickey, the script called for, for instance, um, George and Marie driving, you know, um, there's no dialogue listed in the script. And so there were takes where we would do it silently and just kind of play it like the script. And then Mickey would say like, all right, cool. Now, you know, let's just, we'll run the camera for a few minutes. Why don't you guys try one where you talk or bring something up? And that's where Jocelyn and I got to, take those backstory conversations and see if we could dramatize them and um, add extra detail to the movie and the characters. Okay, cool. Now, were you wearing a tweed suit for, for the whole film? Yeah, it was hot as fuck. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm a sweaty person, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like, um, I envisioned George as like a film professor and, um, you know, Mickey's got the great classic style. So I just got to be like um, Elliot Gould as a film professor in 1975 or something. Uh, but yeah, I, ha I, I had like, um, I never wear a watch. I got to wear a watch. I had glasses. I don't wear glasses. I had this like really slick suit. And when I started seeing pictures um, of the wardrobe, I really felt that I looked quite a bit different, but also I took some um, style notes from it. I feel like I'm, I'm, I brought a little bit of George with me back to my real life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you bring the tweed or just the watches? Nah, uh, Mickey wouldn't let me keep all, any of that nice stuff. He's probably got it himself somewhere. I felt so horrible. The first day we were filming was all in the car and it was so hot in the car. And it was me and my cinematographer in the back seat, Joe and Jocelyn in the front seat as we're being towed. And Joe is wearing four layers of wool 
because like I'm sweating in like shorts and a t-shirt and he's just driving with literally a winter outfit on and like the car had to be a hundred plus degrees. It was, I was like, I'm so sorry. The next day will be easier. I swear to God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause it's got, it's hard to tell if it's hot or it's cold there. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. It was, it was well, both. You know, yeah. It was both. Some days it was, you know, beautiful. Other, you know, other days like the Richard Brake day, it was like 30 degrees and 30 mile an hour winds. It was literally the most difficult day of shooting I've ever had on all six of my movies. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I think that's my time. So thank you, Mickey Keating, Jocelyn Donahue, and Joe Swanberg for chatting with me. Thank, thank you so you. much. Have fun at the festival. Oh, appreciate it. Thanks, Daniel. Bye.